So to start off this very exciting tutorial, we are going to take a look at the interface and just sort of get a general feel for Marvelous Designer. Now for any of you out there who have used Marvelous Designer before, this chapter might not be super relevant to you, but you know, maybe you could watch along anyway, maybe you'll learn something. So this is pretty much what you'll be presented with when you open Marvelous Designer for the first time. Um, you will be presented with a sort of like a uh, graphics option as well, like anti-aliasing and shadow and stuff like that. And depending on your machine, you might want to turn that up and down, but you kind of have to experiment with that. So just to jump right into it, it's it's pretty simple. Marvelous Designer is not like your typical 3D program. So, you know, you won't be doing any modeling, you don't have any polygons, you don't have any vertices, stuff like that. What you will have, it's more like you, you, know, you, you simulate clothing. So, this sexy lady is the first sort of thing. This is the standard project in Marvelous Designer. And this is what you'll be presented with. You have two viewports. The first one is a 3D viewport and the second one is a 2D viewport. And the navigation in this is pretty much like your standard 3D application. And to sort of, if you have anything you're like, anything you're, you're used to from another program, you can actually set that in the settings. So if the, for the first thing I always do if I set up a new Marvelous Designer is I go into my user settings and then I go onto view controls and here you have a super nice option to just have a user preset or whatever you want to work with. I usually work in Maya, so I just set my preset to Maya, but if you work in something like Max, you can set it to that and then you know your, your navigation is going to be sort of like what you're used to. So let's set that to Maya. And then it's just, for my users, it's going to be like the default alt key. You zoom in and out with middle and right click and stuff like that. And the same thing applies in the 2D viewport, except, you know, you don't have a Z dimension, so you won't be able to actually rotate around. Because this is just like your UV view, like you're used to. Another really, really important thing, at least for me, because I think it's, it's really annoying to work with, is if you come back... Under, well, if you go to preferences, there's this gizmo tab and by default everything in Marvelous or like the gizmo in Marvelous is going to be set to screen space. So when you rotate anything, it's like, uh, I can't really get precise um, translation with anything. So I usually take the gizmo and set it to world coordinate or local. That way we just ensure that X, Y and Z always point in the direction that we want them to. And this just makes it a lot easier to sort of move fabrics around. Now. Not to overwhelm anyone who's just getting into Marvelous, I'd like to cover just a few of the hotkeys that I typically use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, mm, I'd say that Marvelous, you don't really need to know, like, because there aren't really that many hotkeys, to be honest. And the hotkeys that are there are just like, well, you've got all the buttons up here, but it's just to speed up your workflow a little bit. So two of the most important keys, I think, is when you're in the 3D view, you have Q, which is sort of like your select and move key. So if you've done anything to your mesh and you're messing around with other other options, you can always press Q and just make sure that you get back to that. And in the 2D viewport, the sort of equivalent of that is gonna be Z. So you can see it's already selected up here, which is like an edit pattern. It'll just allow you to move it around just like you would in the 3D viewport. The next really important one, I suppose, is going to be our simulation button, which you can find up here, or you can also just press space. Like, it's really easy to get into the hotkeys in Marvelous, because, like, it's so nice, because it just says on all the buttons, what's the hotkey for this, what's the hotkey for that, and you can always go in and customize it if you, like, you want to be, like, a super power user, you know, don't want to click any buttons at all, so that's always an option. But let's just press space and see what this does. So this is going to simulate the dress onto our model. And from here, you can just go in after you've pressed Q and you've got this selected. Uh, you can go in, you can start editing the, the dress. Like, let's say you want to start taking her dress off or you want it to, like, you know, whatever. It's, it's pretty straightforward. The more complicated your clothing becomes, the heavier the simulation also becomes. But this is also dependent on your computer and, you know, and your graphic settings like we talked about in the beginning. And in the 3D viewport, I think there's only really one other hotkey that I want to go through. Yeah, it's going to be the, yeah. So, like, let's say you make something and you like, you like to stick it to her face or something like that. If you hold down the W key, 
I say while you're in si like right now I'm not simulating but now because it's turned orange I'm in sim mode so if I hold down the W key while I press on something you see there's this tiny orange little dot on it and if I just let go of you know both of the keys it just it just stays there and you can also do this when you're not in sim mode just hold on W and then just press on the fabric and then you'll have something there then you can go in afterward and manipulate it if you want to this is just really nice for when you're tacking things around and you don't want to like ah, this falls down all the time and in order to remove that you just go in again with W hold on W press it press it and they go away and the first hotkey I want to cover in the 2D view is going to be our polygon tool, which you find. This is the polygon tool, and this is this is how you will draw your pattern. Um, the way things work in Marvelous is that, kind of like in a 3D software, instead of modeling things in 3D, you model things in 2D. And things can... It, it's not always super intuitive how clothing actually looks like when it's sort of like because this is like unfolded clothing right uh, a benefit of that I should also mention is that these are going to be your UVs so by definition your UVs will be like literally perfect when they come out of marvelous which is which is very nice so but back to the polygon tool as you hover over it it says H so I click it or press H now this gives us the option to start drawing out a few points like that and now you can see it's automatically synced up to the viewport. And there we got our clothing. So that's the first piece of clothing. Like what we could do is to say, okay, now we want to, if you come over to the 3D viewport and just click it, you can see we get the gizmo up. And let's just transform this down, rotate it around. And then we'll just try to hit space to simulate it. And then it's gonna fall down onto our model, which is super great. Now let's say uh, we really want it you know, we want to edit this now. So we jump on to our next super useful hotkey, which is going to be C. And C is a sort of curve edit tool. So right now all my lines are straight, but let's say this one, we wanted this one to be curved. So you just go over with your mouse and you just sort of drag in stuff. And it's very helpful. Now, this only really works because it like it sets one sort of curve point and then you can edit it based on that. But if you wanted more curve points to have sort of like maybe a snaky line or something like that, you can come over to the next tool, which uses the V key. And that's just a sort of multiple curve points you can you can insert. So you can set a curve point there, you set another curve point there and maybe one there. Then afterwards, like if you want to go and edit this, you can go in and like with the V keys like pressed or not pressed when you've you've gone to the edit curve point tool I think it is edit curve point you go in and then you will only be able to modify like one curve point at a time but if you go back to the C key which is just edit the curve then you go in and you sort of you you move the entire curve out at, at the same time which is which is very helpful I think jumping on like obviously you're not going to be able to make any sort of sexy clothing with just one piece of fabric so we are gonna make multiple pieces of fabric that's usually how it works when you make clothing so press our H key again you've got the other keys which is for the rectangular and the circular ones I I honestly don't really maybe I use the rectangular uh, polygon sometimes if I've got to make like something just quick box super straight but I usually just draw stuff out with the polygon tool. I find it a lot easier to use. So let's make this kind of shape here. See again, it's already synced up. Cool. Now we want, let's say we want these two to be zoned together and we want to sew it from here to there. Now, underneath here, we've got two different sewing tools. We've got a segment sewing tool, which is has the in key as a hotkey and the free sewing. So segment is if, let's just press it. You see, there are two types of sewing. You can say you sew from the top to the bottom. That's what, so you start the sewing on the top. That's sort of like when you start sewing multiple pieces of fabric together, the direction of your, your stitches or stitching is gonna become very important. But yeah, you'll see that in, in later lessons. So with the segment tool, we're just gonna sew this, click that line and then you see it starts to form this other line. Now we're gonna get a few numbers up here. 
and you can see on the left hand it says 499 which is the segment length of the left piece of fabric and 495 for the right side and if you look at the blue number you see a 4.4 that's the difference in length so typically when at least when I'm working with fabrics and marvelous I don't I don't like to be mega precise because if you're super precise with all your edge lengths then things have a tendency to look very 3D because I mean let's be honest when you're doing when you're doing sort of sewing and stuff in the real world yes it's also going to be pretty perfect but there's always going to be variance in in edge lengths and the variance in edge lengths really it really helps you to to sell the the realism a little bit more I think so Anyway, that was a bit of a sidetrack. So click that one and then sew it onto the other. Now in our 3D viewport now, you can see that we've got these amazing pink lines and that's our like sewing lines. So it's gonna sew that from there to there or actually it's gonna sew these two together. So let's just, man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a scary ghost. So let's just move this stuff up here <laughs> and then just press space again to sim it and it's gonna sew these two together. And now we've got something super cool lying on the floor. And, oh my God, no. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> there you go. So that's how you sew things together with the segment sewing tool. But we also have the free sewing tool. And the free sewing tool, let's actually just go in, we did before with the W key, and we'll just put a little pin in there. So now that's just gonna hang freely. So with the free sewing tool, the free sewing tool is very nice if you're, let's say, right now this is stitched all the way, right? But let's pretend this was for, you know, something like an open collar or something like that. So, if we go in, if you press the B key, you have your edit sewing, which is just the first one here. And that lets you select your 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 sewing lines and you can just go in with the delete key and delete that. Now your sewing's gonna be gone. So. That is super useful because you can you can do a bunch of things with that. But I'll show you that. Let's see. So we go to the free sewing tool, and this is where top to bottom sewing really becomes important. Because if you start, let me just demonstrate with the free sewing tool. So you can see it snaps to all the to the points. So let's just snap it to this point, click it, and then you start dragging out. And then you can see like the length of your the length of the segment you're gonna sew. So if you remember, this was four ninety nine. In, in like total length let's say we do 270 on that side then you just click it and it snaps there then you go to the other piece of fabric that you want to sew to click it and then you start dragging out you can see the the dark blue dot is where the segment lengths are going to match up and you can choose to you know match these up or you can sew it to something longer like this for example that's the that's the benefit of the the free sewing tool and they both have their merits like sometimes you want to use one sometimes you want to use the other you sort of get a feeling for that the more fabrics you you play around with so if we simulate that again you see now we're going to have some part of the fabric it's going to be a little bit tight because it's creasing up because they have different edge, edge lengths. And that's one of the points where we're going to get into like something that's going to start selling the realism at, at some point. You know, when you've got, it's the same thing with the dress here. You can see that it starts to give this wavy feel a little bit. And, and that's something you could achieve with having different edge lengths, for example. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's a ghost curtain or something. Anyway. If we just quickly jump back to our um, edit sewing tool, that was with the B key. And don't worry, like I'll include sort of like a quick hotkey list. If you really want to look at that, not in Marvelous, um, just, you know, for, for convenience sake, so, so you don't forget the hotkeys. But honestly, I just recommend you go into Marvelous and just, you know, you hover over whatever tool you want to use. I think that's the best way you sort of get a feeling for which keys you're going to use. Anyway. B key for edit sewing. So before I showed you, you can delete the, the, the sewing segments that you've created, but you can also edit the length. So if you just select it, you just click one of the edges, you can start dragging on the segments to say, oh, I want this to be shorter. Actually, I want this to be longer now. So you're not sort of tied to anything. You don't have to undo or delete all the time. And what I talked about before as well with like the top to bottom, 
where it was very important, like here you can see it's been sewn from the bottom to the top. And the other piece of fabric has also been sewn from the bottom to the top. Uh, sometimes it can be tricky to, to figure out which way to actually sew things because you're working in a 2D space. But you're looking, well, you're looking in a 2D space and you're working with a 3D space as well. So you can get a little confusing sometimes. So if you just, let's see here, let's delete this line again. And we'll go with the uh, free sewing tool. That was the M key. We'll do that to there. So that's from the bottom to the top. And then we'll do from the top to the bottom here. Now you can see that the segment is going to cross over. This is really bad. Because now the the sim is going to be weird. It's going to start folding in on itself because that's... Oh, man. It's created a black hole of just destruction here. <laughs> um, so typically this is not what, what you want, right? Because then one normal is facing the other way and one is facing that way. It's not good. Not good. Uh, there might be situations where this is useful. I can't think of any, but, you know... Maybe. So if this happens and you don't want to have to redo your sewing, you can come in with the B key again and then you can just right click on the edge. And then you can see there's another hotkey, control B, or just reverse the sewing. So this puts the sewing sort of direction the right way around. You just re-sim it. Uh, sometimes Marvelous will have a little bit of a hard time figuring out what's happening because everything is intersecting now. So uh, sort of a good practice if something fucks up like that is you can move a pattern away or if you select your patterns you can select multiple patterns just by holding down shift and then just right clicking on them and you can go in and say reset 2d arrangement or reset 3d arrangement so the 2d arrangement is going to be the arrangement that you have in your 2d viewport right so if i reset these pieces of fabric they're going to be pushed up here so let's see that well oh, reset 2d arrangement great if we're here and we've moved them around see this was this was our initial sim position this is going to be reset to the 3d uh arrangement so that's very handy if things start fucking up and you don't want to have to deal with this so now these are separate again and we can just sim it with the space key and everything is fantastically beautiful man that's great now one last hotkey I just want to quickly cover for for this amazing intro chapter is going to be Shift Z. And you can see Shift Z just shows you and hides the line length. Like sometimes you don't want to work with them because if you've got a lot of stuff happening in here it can be hard to tell what's like what's going on. You just Shift Z to hide them. Um, you can Shift Z again to just show okay that's 700, that's 500, whatever. It's really helpful. Uh, I use it all the time. For the most part, I think I leave show the line edge length on just because it, it's it's useful to, to sort of know the length of your lines most of the time. All right, I think that's going to do it for our basic introduction to Marvelous Designer. We're going to get more in depth with more of the tools and I'll talk more about it, you know, once we get into actually creating fabrics on our on our avatar. So yeah, let's just jump straight into the next chapter.